lovely imps. Today, I am going to be reacting to something with you. A fairly large uh, animation channel called Sisyphus55 has released a very, very interesting video. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Here's the channel, Sisyphus55, and this is the video. It's called The Revolution Will Not Be Live Streamed. And given that I'm a live streamer, and I also talk about politics, I thought it would be very interesting to live react to this video. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. And you're gonna be doing it with me, which is really fun. Um, on the cover of this video, as you can probably tell, uh, maybe not, cause it's kind of small, but there is a picture of a guy who appears to be Vosh and a picture of a guy over here who appears to be Hassan. Vosh and Hassan are two uh, very well-known and quite f r respectively famous online left-leaning political live streamers. And um, I quite like both of them. Um, many of you will know I am like IRL friends with Vosh, so obviously um, I obviously like him as a person, but I also quite like what he makes. Uh, what his content represents. I also uh, feel quite positively towards uh, most of what Hassan does as well. Um, I have critiqued Hassan at times in the past. God knows I've critiqued Vosh in the past. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, you won't know this, but uh, me and Vosh have had some fairly public uh, uh, disagreements. Um, and also in private as well. But uh, nonetheless, we still get along quite well. Uh, despite our disagreements. Um, I, I, I tend to be, you know, I try to be fairly constructively critical of, of, uh, of most of the people who operate in these spaces. Um, and I was, I was just thinking about some of the things that I think um, both of these two uh, pictured uh, live stream content creator, political advocate type people do that I like. Um, and I figured I would share that before we get into the video, which is uh, I think that one thing that Vosh does incredibly well uh, is I think that he defends the core components of his beliefs very, very well. Um, he is able to articulate in great detail uh, why he uh, fights for progressive social causes, why he pushes for things like co-ops and union memberships, why he ultimately believes uh, in a uh, socialist and even a post-socialist project. And I think he's very, very good at uh, defending those things in uh, the public sphere in ways that most other content creators in these spaces are not able to do. And he's able to do it off the cuff, and I think that's really good. Um, and uh, in a slightly different uh, way, I think that Hassan is very good at making the best parts of his worldview make sense to a huge amount of people. I think that even like a, like fairly young viewers, teenagers can tune into Hassan and understand what Hassan finds appealing about um, socialism, about communism, um, about um, uh, you know, all of his socially uh, progressive uh, uh, positions. Um, while Hassan, I don't think, does quite as strong of a job defending them down to the little details as Vosh does, I think that Hassan is able to make them more uh, accessible, uh, to inspire a, a, a an interest in them in a way that Vosh is not able to. And so, um, personally, I think that there's room in a space like this for both types of um, content creator. I just wanted to say that to begin with so that, you know, we start this video off in a positive way and so that, uh, and because right before I started recording this video, a lot of people in my beautiful live stream, which you can join at demonmama.com forward slash live, and you should, um, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I, I wanted to answer their questions as to my thoughts on the different creators. And I wanted to keep it positive because I imagine, at least by the title, I imagine this video is gonna be somewhat critical and that's also fine. Anyway, I haven't seen many people reacting to this video, so I thought it would be valuable for us to do so. Uh, I guess, uh, without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Let's do it. And I have not seen this video again. I just wanna reiterate that. Let's watch.
Philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. I don't think it's a stretch to state that there is a surplus of political content online. Debate bros, commentary channels, pretentious video essayists, it's an endless stream of chatter, engagement, and information. Which is good, right? People should be informed. People should discuss how to negotiate and manage power through the blind veil of digital spaces. And even if the means of discourse is indirectly brought to you through billion dollar companies that would very much like to preserve the status quo, surely we're just doing the best with what we have. You can't change the system by working outside of it, right? But is online politics in its current form really doing anything? I'm going to argue no, or at least it isn't enough. I believe that a majority of political content online is at best promoting apathy and at worst actively playing into the systems that, at least on the left, it often criticizes. I am actually very excited to hear the argument here, because this is something that I have discussed on my stream recently. Some of my frustrations with online politics and the online left. So I think this video is going to be right up our alley. Let's continue. Despite infinite digital attention given to the poly crisis, a cluster of related global risks with compounding effects, the radical reformations required to tackle these issues have not yet happened. The revolution will not be live streamed. By the way, uh, if the video volume needs to be changed at any point, please uh, please tell me in the chat. Um, it's, it's fluctuating a little bit. I'm trying to keep an eye on it. Just let me know if it needs to. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. On the topic of trying to understand the world, personally, I can feel pretty lost when it comes to trying to get a grasp on many topics you see discussed online. AI, coding, and data analysis rule the ways in which we interpret and consume information. These topics do sound complicated, but thankfully, there's an easy way to learn about them in order to stay informed. Brilliant is by far the best way- Okay, sorry, I'm gonna skip the ad read. Um... Because I'm not sponsored by this. Obviously, the ad read can stay present in the original video, which you can see on Sisyphus's channel, but uh, I don't endorse this. So <laughs> I can't. I need to skip that. Sorry, guys. Free for 30 days, and the first 200 to sign up will get 20% yeah, no, off. No free rides for the advertisements, unfortunately. Annual plan. Yeah, my show is sponsored by viewers like you. I don't have any sponsors, okay? Except for my lovely imp. So if you want to support the show, toss a few bucks my way and make sure that you have pressed the like button. That beautiful like sound is what goes off in my brain when you press the like button. So do it. Online politics offers a false sense of action and may actively hinder real world progress. This is evident in three common characteristics found across online politics. Here I'll define online politics as the content generated by influencers, content creators, and talking heads who people usually go to for infotainment on local and global issues. Firstly, as evident in the sponsored segment you just watched, content and journalism in general is in itself reliant on and usually exists for engagement that can then be transformed into capital. In a general trend, mm -hmm. this has led to news deserts. Communities that are not seen as profitable will lose their local source of news. This disproportionately impacts poorer areas who do not That's turn true. out the same profit as wealthier areas. People in news deserts- the, By the way, it's not just news deserts, although I recognize that's sort of the, the topic at hand, but you see this phenomenon with regard to research, with regard to um, medical care, uh, be, that is the product of a for-profit world, uh, a world that is fixated 
on how to turn everything into more money uh, is obviously is as a product of that going to neglect communities that are less profitable. It's a huge problem. Um, we actually just talked about this recently with uh, the uh, on the topic of uh, non-binary identities and how there is less science being devoted to understanding non-binary identities because well there's less non-binary people and we live in a for-profit system where even research has to be financed to great extents and often has to be able to demonstrate the ability to return on investments. Will then often turn to social media to get their news, which is often more general, polarizing, and opinionated. This in turn increases the odds of those in news deserts making misinformed political decisions and ending up in filter bubbles. And this is how ended up on the walls of the Capitol. But what specifically? Welcome, 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 welcome to all of the Keffel's Wigglers. Come on in and please get comfortable. Um, we are in the dead center, actually the beginning, I should say, not truly the dead center, of a reaction to the revolution will not be live streamed. And I uh, recommend you to come get comfortable. Um, in you should come over to my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. It's just like keffels.gg. You can get comfy. You can use cute, adorable emotes. We're very, very happy to have you here. Thank you to Keffels for the raid. It's incredibly generous and kind of you. And you guys are about to get a real treat because this is a spicy topic. Uh, so far, just to summarize, the argument uh, being presented by this video is that online political content is actually detrimental to the goals of many of the people who, uh, or many of the stated goals of many of the people who make it. That online political content uh, pulls people away from actual political engagement and pushes them farther away. And of course, um, as this goes on, we're going to listen to the argument and respond to it. But um, this video is by Sisyphus55. Uh, and so far, it's been very interesting, even though I don't know that I 100% agree. Um, anyway, thank you for being here, and we're going to continue the react, so I'm very, very happy to have you. ...lead makes social media so bad for politics. Let's turn to the progressive left, where you'd hope there's a greater chance for progress. Chat donations, Patreon support, AdSense, influencers need to weigh the extent to which a potential topic is important enough to give attention to versus the extent to which it is juicy and entertaining, thereby driving traffic and revenue. Naturally, most content will gravitate towards the latter. However, political influencers tend to actually settle on a middle ground, a form of politics that appears to be fighting the good fight in an entertaining manner. This middle ground, called deference politics, focuses on conversational power and attention over fixing material disparities. The concern here is usually rested on avoiding complicity in injustice and policing or denouncing certain social behaviors. Hmm. Now, deference politics is not in itself bad. It prioritizes traumatic experiences above all else as that which should be tackled and given attention to. The issue, however, is that these discussions remain quite insular. They don't go far enough. As Olufemi Otaiwo, the author of Elite Capture, beautifully puts, bad roommates aren't the problem, for the same reason that being a good roommate isn't the solution. The problem is that we are still trapped in the same room. Someone says something edgy, another calls them out on Twitter, a response video is made, the other person reacts to the video, a third person jumps in to support their fellow influencer. A severe amount of hours, resources, and attention has been given to determining whether this particular roommate now, my goodness, that right there is so true. I think this is like, so far, this point right here is one of the best call-outs of the way these spaces operate in that, you know, uh, a, a particular drama or back and forth can end up consuming, you know, countless hours. Oh my God. I mean, there's so many I could talk about. How many, uh, I mean, but... But also, I'm interested to see uh, what Sisyphus55 thinks the solution to this is. Because um, maybe the solution, uh, I, I don't know, I guess we're gonna have to find out because I find it very difficult because 
uh, this is something I brought up uh, in 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 my return rant. You know, where I was talking about how much time is wasted and how much mental well-being is wasted on certain drama topics and whatnot. Um, it's like. Uh, uh, you know, it, but it's also hard sometimes because I've been the subject of drama, uh, which or some people would call it drama, but for me, I was very literally having in, gigantic platforms uh, be mobilized against me to say things, horrible things that that actually materially damaged my ability to. Uh, say what I want to say online uh, to to make a living doing this type of work, and I'm somebody who's fairly upfront about the uh, not not even fairly upfront. I'm very upfront about the fact that what I do is mostly over overall entertainment. That I do entertainment that hopes to be somewhat educational. Um, yeah. So this is an interesting. This is a very interesting point so far. Should be tolerated. The world has not changed because of this but your favorite streamer or video essayist, and maybe their opponent, is now a little wealthier. If we back up, what does this do? It directs what little attentional power we can control at symbolic sites of power, rather than at the root political issues that mm. explain why everything is so effed up. This is an- Now, I don't know if I agree 100% with that. I'm gonna save most of my analysis for the end of this video. But I want to explain where my thinking is on this. Um, because I don't know if that attention uh, is, like, can be directed elsewhere. Like, um, people, uh, people showing up uh, to watch, you know, a, a, to watch something like this might simply not watch. Uh, anything else you know what I mean um, like like I don't think it's a, I don't know if you can I don't know if you can like say oh well by talking about this necessarily you are taking away from the other thing because I don't know that they would watch anything else to begin with um, maybe they would find some other form of entertainment but it might just be somebody else willing to talk about this subject it's one of those things where I find it hard um, yeah, or watch a or watch a more right wing narrative on the same on the topic that they're interested in, and I do think that some people take this like as a defense too far and go, well, you know, whatever I'm doing, it's better because somebody worse would be doing it otherwise, and I don't think that that's generally a very good defense. But I don't know that you can just say that like talking about the the represent representation of a thing always takes away like deletes views from the root issues because those people just simply may never actually pay attention to those root issues. And interestingly, I think sometimes that's why one of the challenges of being a political content creator is uh, it's like being a bit of a matador, you know what I mean? You have to manage attention and actually manage to direct attention in the correct ways. And I think that's very hard to do sometimes. Uh, I don't know that you can always succeed in doing that. Sometimes you just get the bull just bar barrels into you, so to say. But I do think that it's something that uh, people who are interested in this type of work have to think about. How do I harness attention and direct it in good ways? Um, even knowing and being, you know, aware of the limitations like what Sisyphus just discussed, like the fact that like it's very possible to for viewers to basically get sucked into dozens of actual real hours of their lives being uh, devoted to following the back and forth of a particular situation of a back and forth between two content creators. I just don't know if it's as simple as saying that those views are being deleted from more important issues because I don't know that it, those views would even exist. I think those views are conditional, um, that those people are looking for something in particular. I mean, I do think that it can be worsened, but I don't know if it's as simple as that, you know? Let's continue. Important point. Whether this orgy of online drama is deliberate or not at the level of influencers, it really helps to maintain the status quo. 
This is elite capture, defined as the way socially advantaged people tend to gain control over resources meant for others. Elite capture often cleverly adapts to resistance by incorporating a tolerable level of it. For example, Amazon can buy up Twitch and host leftist streamers. These creators, reliant on the attention economy of their platforms, are then somewhat limited in advocating for radical action, since this could hurt them financially. This isn't to blame influencers necessarily, they may be actively doing their best within the system. However, as Taiwo notes, the game objective may be viscerally and irreducibly personal for each player. Self-esteem, security, life itself, yep. but the rules and the context that determine which actions make sense have been created by others who benefit from the outcome of those rigged systems. That is a, a good point. Um, that is a good point. Um, and it is true to a certain degree. Um, we all know that there are certain topics you literally cannot talk about on YouTube. And there are certain topics that, while maybe they can technically be talked about, will not necessarily be beneficial for you. And the fact that our media is made up of people uh, who are trying to make a living you know, that YouTube, the way that YouTube is structured, the way that Twitch is structured, it's individual people setting out to try and make a living for themselves. Um, like, that is a problem. And it does mean that there's always this aspect that undermines all portions of it. I don't know if that necessarily means that the value is less over... I mean, I think that it means that, that you have to understand the field that's being played on and the limitations of it. Because I think that's true about other jobs as well, right? Like for example, uh, every person who's working a job at McDonald's, well, they're trying to stay stay afloat. And if, they're, if they didn't have to spend all their time at McDonald's, they could spend their time, uh, you know, doing other things. Um, and there are certain things you can't do at McDonald's as a result of the work. You can't really talk to other people all that much. You're, you got to be filling orders, taking calls. You got to be, you know, flipping the burgers and whatever. And you can't be having political discussions or moving towards a radical future of change. I think that's just true about the entirety of a wage system, that a system that makes people live, you know, hand to mouth or close to it at all times, that lives, that makes people have a precarious existence to sell their bodies and their labor limits your ability to do anything politically. I don't know if this is 100% unique to the streaming space, though there might be a point to be had that the aesthetics of the streaming space give the illusion that that's not what's going on. And I do think that that's uh, something to be considered. But, you know, it's one of those things, you know, uh, a lot of people are limited and bound um, by their uh, by their their monetary circumstances from all kinds of things. So people would inevitably have more rich political lives uh, if they didn't have to spend most of their day in a, in a situation where they can't talk about um, or think about all kinds of things. Yeah. Well, let's continue. Elite capture destroys democracy by subtly capturing the political realm for the elites while maintaining an illusion of choice. And even in non-traditional spaces of political action, elite capture works its magic. This is assisted through the third trait of online politics, the abstraction and intellectualization of reality. A hero ain't nothing but a sandwich, okay. Baudrillard predicted a world where our media-saturated minds, chronically drifting between flashy events and images, will be in such a comatose of fascination that the very concept of meaning will be lost. Meaning, after all, depends on stability and fixed structures. We are now in the habit of perceiving reality in terms of attraction and surprise. As information hunters, we are becoming blind to still inconspicuous things, to what is common, the incidental, and the customary, the things that do not attract us but ground us in being, writes Byung-chul Han. 
namely this digital world of non-things prioritizes information over truth. Whereas truth is stable and durable, information is unstable and evades the ability for us to linger on it, to truly process and reflect. This is evident in how much of online political activity appears to be more about playing than acting. Whereas action breaks with the present and brings something new, well, that's wonderful, Matthew McConaughey. I, I hope that you carry my hello back. That's wonderful. Play does not interfere with the present. Action involves resistance, whereas play resists real resistance. Why does this happen? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know if I agree with that. Ooh, I don't know if I agree with that at all. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Oh, man, Doe would have so much to say about this. Let me re-listen to that again. Oh, man, I wish Doe was listening right now. Maybe I should go yell. Maybe I should go shout down to Doe. I said, almost said yell, but I'm not actually going to yell at Doe. Maybe I should call Doe to come listen to this. Oh, hold on. Let's listen. Bring something new. Play does not interfere with the present. Action involves resistance, whereas play resists real resistance. Play resists real resistance. I don't think I agree with that at all. Maybe this is just a weird definition of play, but, and also, I mean, okay, oh, but I'm, I feel like I'm distracting from the actual react. Hold on a second. I'm gonna need, okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get dough. Give me a second, everybody be kind and, 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 and pretend that I'm not running away in the middle of a segment, hold on. Hey, dough. Okay, I got dough. Hold on, everybody. Okay, everybody. All right, I got dough. I actually got dough. Okay. We have to wait until I see dough in chat, and then we can continue this, because I feel like dough was literally just reading a whole piece talking about play as a political concept, and and I feel like dough will have so much to say on this, and uh, I don't feel like I can make the argument but I don't know that I agree with this because I don't think that play is what it sounds like the way that this video is talking about it sounds like it's it's saying that play is like a bad thing that it's like a purely childish thing but I don't think that's true in fact I think that people that play is where people are sometimes most honest and also um, most capable of expressing their desire for the world and I don't just mean like play like playing with blocks I mean like the state of play where people are um, are 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 engaging in in uh, uh, how do I explain this God um, <sighs> role play is one such example where uh, it's like it's like playing a character is able to uh, allow you to express yourself and think about things in ways that are different than if you were being told at a job you need to be as chipper as possible right now and while you might uh, you know be doing the same thing when you sit down uh, to to play a character um, you you might be engaging in a uh, uh, I am going to be I'm going to act different than I feel in this moment, the state of play is completely different than the imposition. You see what I mean? Because play is engaged in so freely, I don't know that it's in, that it can be accurately said to be in opposition to action or that it can even be said to be in opposition to politics. Let me see if, let me see if Doe is in chat. Yes, Doe is in chat. Test. 
Okay. Are you listening? Doe, if you're here, sh okay, you're typing out. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to the video and I want you to hear this segment. We're gonna go back and listen to this part about Baudrillard and then we're gonna continue forward so that you can understand what the context is and why I felt like you needed to be here. We're lit, uh, LB says, what's going on? We are currently reacting to Sisyphus 55's video, The Revolution Will Not Be Live Streamed which so far has been very, very interesting, very provocative. And I don't know if I agree 100%, but I've come to a part where I really don't feel like I agree. But I wanted Doe to hear this so that it can contribute. All right, let's go. Here we go. Baudrillard predicted a world where our media-saturated minds, chronically drifting between flashy events and images, will be in such a comatose of fascination that the very concept of meaning will be lost. Meaning, after all, depends on stability and fixed structures. We are now in the habit of perceiving reality in terms of attraction and surprise. As information hunters, we are becoming blind to still inconspicuous things, to what is common, the incidental, and the customary, the things that do not attract us but ground us in being, writes Byung-Chul Han. Namely, this digital world of non-things prioritizes information over truth. Whereas truth is stable and durable, information is unstable and evades the ability for us to linger on it, to truly process and reflect. This is evident in how much of online political activity appears to be more about playing than acting. Whereas action breaks with the present and brings something new, play does not interfere with the present. Action is Action breaks with the present and brings something new. Play does not... Play does not interrupt the present. The present and brings something new. Play does not interfere with the present. Action involves resistance, whereas play resists real resistance. Why does this happen online? Well, there's a real difference between knowing that the stove can burn you when you touch it versus actually experiencing the burn of the stove. Where the former is theory, the latter prompts immediate action. Get huh. That is an interesting... That, an, that is an interesting dichotomy. to make because I don't think that play involves um, negating immediate action in fact uh, play is an action in and of itself it, definitionally and also uh, I, I guess you could draw a, a line between theory and immediate action but theory can inform immediate action in incredibly important ways. And sometimes, like, like for example, I mean, for example, uh, there are some actions you cannot survive. Like, you know, uh, what if I decide to eat this, this uh, gimpy gimpy plant and then you die in agonizing pain from the poison that is present within it? The theory, uh, 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 the, the theoretical knowledge of poison and pain that could be provided to you from study might entirely negate your need to experience death permanently. <laughs> Doe says, that this is exactly why I wanted Doe to pop in. Doe says, there's a bunch of different concepts of play in political contexts. Perlman in Against History, Against Leviathan has a fun bit on work versus play. He takes and criticizes S. Diamond's take that primitive peoples make no distinction between work and play. Perlman prods this idea. If the Kong, if the Kong visited our offices and factories, they might think that we were playing. Why else would we be in a factory? Perlman uh, Doe then says, Perlman follows this up with, I think that Diamond meant to say something more profound. A time and motion engineer watching a bear near a berry patch would not know when to punch the clock for the bear's work. 
Does the bear start working when he walks to the berry patch, when he picks the berry, or when he opens his jaws? If the engineer has half of a brain, he might say that the bear makes no distinction between work and play. If the engineer has an imagination, he might say that the bear experiences joy from the moment the berries turn deep red and that none of the bear's motions are actually work. So this is a slightly different distinction, I think, than, than he's making here. But I actually, oh, well, actually, I don't know. Because what he's what what Sisyphus fifty five has said is that action is not the same thing as play because action is when you are interrupting the present uh, in order to bring about change. But I don't know if that's necessarily true. It, it like if that's necessarily not not that it's necessarily true, but if it's necessarily separate from something like play. For example, in the case of the bear, the bear is is still bringing about real change by pursuing the berry that it desires, by picking up the, desire, the berry and putting it in its mouth. What has changed is the context. Uh, if you are sent to work on a berry farm, um, you might not uh, uh, be experiencing any joy whatsoever. You may not, not see that as play whatsoever, even though you are engaging in the exact same actions that the bear is, technically. You are walking to the berry, looking for a ripe berry and picking it up. Nonetheless, you are engaging in work or action, whereas the bear is engaging in something like play. It doesn't, uh, uh, the, the bear is not uh, participating in, this, in the process in the same way that you are. Interesting. Oh, you've come. The book bit's too long to, to write out. Can okay, you can just read it. Yeah, come on in. Let me find it again really quick. Damn, this is actually, I knew that watching this video was going to be an interesting one, but I didn't think it was gonna get this interesting. You're gonna have to make sure that yeah. you go, go so down go like down this, here for a and bit. yes. Agamben? So this is from Agamben's Profanations, all right? Agamben is one of those theory people that this guy just yelled about. Uh, this chapter is called In Praise of Profanation. Up there. Uh, 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 but um, the, the, the very beginning of this, of this, of, of In Praise of Profanation, you can't see that at no, all. No, no, you can't really. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to show the them the book. The very beginning of this bit uh, uh, talks about um, what, what is, what is to be sacred and what is to profane. So like really quickly, uh, the Roman jurist knew perfectly well what it meant to profane. Sacred or religious were the things that in some way belonged to the gods. As such, they were removed from the free, uh, 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 Sorry, from the free use and commerce of men. They could neither be sold nor held in lean, neither given for use of fruct nor burdened by servitude. And any act that violated or transgressed this special unavailability, which reserved these things for the god, or uh, 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 was sacrilegious. And if consecrate, like to consecrate, was uh, removing something from human economy, so, so taking it from the present and setting it aside for the gods. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's making the sacred. sacred. Right. Um, and making profane is the opposite, to bring it back into free use, back into the, the, the common use, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but following that, it says, um, religion can be defined as that which, um, oh, sorry, 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 I'm actually going to skip that. Not that, not that, not that. I meant to say, uh, over here, the passage from the sacred to the profane can, in fact, also come about by means of an entirely inappropriate use, or rather, reuse of the sacred, namely, play. It's well known that spheres of play and the sacred are closely connected. Most of the games with which we are familiar derive from ancient sacred ceremonies, from divinatory practices and rituals that once belonged, broadly speaking, to the religious sphere. The girotondo was originally a marriage rite. Playing with a ball reproduces the struggle of the gods for possession of the sun. Games of chance derive from oracular practices. The spinning top and the chessboard were instruments of divination. In analyzing the relationship between games and rites, Emile Beneveniste shows that play not only derives from the sphere of the sacred, but also in some ways represents its overturning. The power- So that's funny because what, what this is saying is basically the opposite yes of what is being said by the argument or the definition of play that's being used by Sisyphus 55. Sisyphus 55 is saying that play does not interrupt 
the the the, mm -hmm. the, the standard flow of things. Whereas uh, you know a, a, a Gombin here is making based on a historical you know both et et etymological analysis and a historical analysis that no actually plays quite the opposite yeah, literally it, play breaks up this unity it says the power of the sacred act he writes lies in the conjunction of the myth that tells the story and the rite that reproduces and stages it play breaks up this unity as ludus or physical play it drops the myth and preserves the right or as iochus word play it effaces the right but allows the myth to survive quote if the sacred can be defined through the consubstantial unity of myth and right we can say that one has play when only half of the sacred operation is completed translating only the myth into words or only the right into actions this means that play frees and distracts humanity from the sphere of the sacred without simply abolish interesting it. uh I'll this is why I, this is why I summoned dough for this you see you see this is why this is why I summoned dough for this that's so interesting the that that the literally the opposite definition is being used in why, this particular why does case he think that action is like good in and of itself is it like change in and of itself well Either. that's the thing I feel like it's kind of just an arbitrary yeah. uh, like, is play split. not an action because like well, play is an action case, that was when I that was my first thing that I came up with was like oh wait a second well I, I I apologize if we're fixating on this point so severely but it is one of the four main points of this thing and I don't know that I agree with the idea that play in and of itself is uh is is something that uh that 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 doesn't I mean God like you could you could take it in so many ways a, a gender play uh, hell even role play um, uh, 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 I mean is 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 the act of drag which is su a supreme form of play playing with expression playing with uh, representation playing with your expectations are these not in and of themselves incredible actions that do actually undermine everything that we assume about the world yeah I just don't know if I agree with this Shut the fuck up, nuts, you idiots. All right. You guys have fun. I'll, be, I'll, 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 I'll keep watching. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming. Doe's going to be in the chat still, but this is really interesting. Uh, Keon the astronomer says here it feels like Sisyphus may be critiquing the anarchist theory of action that all actions no matter how small are change change both the actor and the world around them MLs often say those small changes in building the new and the shell of the old just forestalls revolutionary actions necessary well I think that's foolish I think that you would have to be um, you would have to be you would have to just literally deny reality uh, every action is intrinsically a change in the state of the universe um i guess maybe if they want to say that the only thing that matters is building a vanguard to change the world but i think that analyzing actions for what they are that all actions interact with the world um and change the fundamental state of the world no matter how small um i think that that's just a more rational way of approaching it but also that if you if you only categorize action as valuable if it plays to one specific goal you're missing out on the potential of many actions now i don't know if that's true huh interesting this is very very interesting MLs is Marxist Leninists. It's a faction of communism. I, I do not. I, I know this is going to make a lot of people mad, but uh, I struggle to see how most, the vast majority of, of self identified Marxist Leninists um, actually advocate for anything that resembles communism. Um, I, I just. I, I used to be very, very charitable to Marxist Leninists. Um, but as time has gone on, I've, uh, as I've interrogated their worldview more, um, they seem to be neither Marxist nor Leninist. Um, and most of what they advocate for seems to be a strong armed state um, that hijacks capital uh, in the name of a forestalled future uh, uh, or a, 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 a not that's the wrong word forestalled is not the right word there but in the name of a a future accomplishment of of communism which they fairly often seem to not actually know what communism would look like and be um but yeah this might make a lot of people angry but that's just 
that's just what's happened. Uh, and you can actually, if you don't believe me, if you think I'm like lying or or just like trying to to uh, misrepresent, you can just go back through my channel and you can see all of the conversations over time that I've had with Marxist Leninists, the way that I approached and thought about it to begin with. But uh, over time, I've had less and less faith in the um, uh, Marxist Leninists' commitment to anything that is uh, reasonably defined as communism. They don't seem to have much interest in creating a stateless, classless society. In fact, they seem fairly um, specifically motivated to create an incredibly powerful state which is which which creates a political class in and of itself, which often is indistinguishable from uh, bourgeoisie. All right. Anyway, let's not get distracted. Uh, let's not get distracted um, any further. Uh, I, I didn't want to get too off point. We have definitely digressed at this point. Um, I just thought that point on play was very interesting, and that definition of play was very very interesting. And I think I disagree with that definition. I did not hear about that, Killjoy. That's very interesting. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Your hand away from the stove. Online spaces give us information at the loss of truth. There, we don't experience truth, but rather information. We know of a war in Ukraine, the climate crisis, and police brutality but many of us don't know it truly. Truth. Wow, that is a very, very interesting definition of truth. Ah, uh, hmm. I think by that definition, no one can know anything regardless. If that's your definition of truth, uh, if your definition of truth is that uh, you can only... Uh, only the experience of something gives you truth. Well, every single perspective is a different experience of the same thing. Eight people could walk into a burning room and come away with eight or more different observations about that room. They might agree on some of them, but they will probably have, have experienced different things. Um, so I don't know if that is a helpful or useful definition of truth. I mean, unless you're just gonna say that tr that you can never attain anything that we would call truth. I think that's a that that puts a very high stand or a very very yeah very high standard on what is considered truth. Because I do think that you can discern truth, some forms of truth, or at least a part of the truth, from um, from uh, all forms of information about a subject. Um, even if, even, 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 hell, even misinformation can sometimes reveal a truth about something. For example, uh, if you receive misinformation about something, um, you could then know something that an object is not. You, you see what I mean? So it is still truth to say this, an apple that is red and somebody tells you the apple is blue and you're able to look at the misinformation and the truth, then you can go, uh, oh, well, I have now learned something that the apple is not. The apple is not blue, which is a piece of truth. I mean, I think that if you are looking for absolute truth, that that is something that is unattainable. No one can know all things about anything um, at all. I, I don't think that you, that any person is capable of, of simultaneously holding all perspectives on an event, an object, a being, an idea, all at once. There's, it's simply too many. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue, let's continue. Prompts action. This would explain why minorities are far more likely to engage in activism than the melanin deficient. Whereas white people can earnestly sympathize with the information of, for example, police brutality, they do not experience the painful lived truth of experiencing persecution based on the color of their skin. There That's is true. still a knowledge rift, concealed by information that limits any sense of urgency, and therefore action. Well, that is true, but that's also true of uh, of 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 nearly e everything, right? Because 
it is a it is a minority definitionally of people who experience police brutality directly um the experience of someone who is hit with a police club is different than that of a person who's standing right next to it and is almost hit both of them are traumatic both of them are a form of experiencing police brutality all i'm saying is i don't know what this means i don't know what i'm supposed to take from this let's continue this line of thinking has evidently led to the playfulness associated with deference politics where majority groups strongly advocate and platform visible minorities this form of coalition politics, while important in valuing the knowledge embedded in lived traumatic experiences, isn't enough if we wish to prompt real action, even if those platforming may feel like they're doing more than enough. In short, online politics has brought us poorly informed voters, the capture of activism by elites, and a false sense of action. Thank you for watching. Of course, I'm not going to leave it at Oh, oh, I, I actually got, I got a little nervous for a second. <laughs> Holy shit. I was like, wait a second. I would have been, okay, I would have been so fucking mad. I would have been legitimately angry if that was the point. You have no, the, the small flash of anger that I felt going, I spent all that time reacting for a video that doesn't go anywhere at all. I spent all of that time adding my original thoughts to this reaction and whatever. Oh man, thank God. All right, let's continue. Oh, you got me. You get points for that. You definitely successfully trolled me. God damn. That. How can we actually change things? Firstly, we need to move past the idea that this current system of online discourse is constructive. Consuming and supporting content that supports our political bent can give us a false sense of progress. At the end of the day, it is theoretical progress. The spirit of rebellion can exist only in a society where a theoretical equality conceals great factual inequalities. Writes Spirit of rebellion can exist only in a society where a theoretical equality conceals great factual inequalities. Huh. Namely, the true rebellion against current things will only occur when we collectively recognize that deference politics online is in some sense sapping much of our attention from more damaging injustices. Me babbling on about Jordan Peterson does not solve these factual inequalities. From this, we need to transition from the abstraction of information to the concreteness of truth. Theory is important, conversations are important, and there's a multitude of useful Twitter threads and genuinely insightful videos and live streams that have helped me in forming my views. But it's still mostly theory. There will still be lead in our water unless we do something about the pipes. A necessary okay. push through both tangible experience okay. and the real world outside of digital spaces, as well as through a lingering interaction with art that is born out of a genuine experience of suffering, can help this process. This is where we encounter truth. We need to know in our hearts, and not just abstractly, that we are bonded by suffering and revolt is heroic defiance to whatever oppresses us. Hmm. What hmm. does this look like exactly? In psychoanalysis, our encounter with suffering and the need for change often comes in four forms. Firstly, there is the withdrawal of the self. I do find it interesting to talk about revolution and then to cite psychoanalysis. Psychoanal the entire school of psychoanalysis being uh, uh, perhaps one of the most insidious uh, anti <laughs> revolutionary fields uh, in the in the in modern history uh, don't believe me take it up with Michel Foucault and uh, Deleuze and Guattari and countless others who have talked about the uh, the 
the the completely broken nature with which with which psychoanalysis imposes a presuppositions onto the thinking organic human mind in such a way that it essentially assumes structures of dominance as the the correct uh, the the correct uh, formulation of the world. Interesting, an interesting decision from reality, in which we numb ourselves to the truth through dissociation. Secondly, we may engage in some sort of divinity, believing ourselves to be closely aligned with something larger and spiritual. Thirdly, we may renounce ourselves in the service of historical necessity, soullessly sacrificing our subjectivity to a revolutionary cause that we believe is guaranteed to bring... But that right there, isn't that sort of... Isn't this what you're saying here is kind of in line with the idea of what was set what was set before which is that suffering is our bond and 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 you know should be channel channeled ex, you know exclusively into revolution i don't well i guess that's not the exact wording but i feel like that was kind of the argument being made let's continue and i'll come back to this salvation and fourthly, we may simply destroy everything, including ourselves, out of a sort of surrender to nihilism. The first two, dissociation and spiritualism, tend to sustain the status quo through inaction. The third, turning oneself into an instrument for a cause, is often too fraught with grand statements on human nature, society, and the future to guarantee that such a sacrifice will pay off. Mm. The final one, while certainly a form of action in terms of destruction, is also really just rage quitting. The simple fact is we don't know how this will all end. Why give up? Why add to the suffering? Hmm. 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 There is another form of pushing for change, Lacan's subjective destitution. Although all previous examples deal with some form of removing our personhood through grand claims or fear, subjective destitution does so out of a sincere and humble attempt at changing for the better. As engaged subjects, we have to act with a view to the future, but for a priori reasons, we cannot base our decisions on a rational pattern of historical progress, so we have to improvise and take risks. One example of subject- Who's this quote? Wait, who- Okay, so the last few quotes have not been cited. I want to see- Let's see who this is. This is this is Immanuel Kant? No. Is this? This comes up to this cup when I search this. Oh no. This quote I want this exactly. Can you get this exact quote? Verbatim. Let's get this verbatim. This doesn't come up. Does anybody have a source for this quote? When I type this in, this doesn't come up as anything. Is it is it is it a self quote? I mean, when I first searched it, it came up as something somewhat similar to there's some simil similar things in Kant and Kant. I always say his name wrong. This is interesting. Man, this is getting interesting. By the way, welcome to President Sunday viewers. Please come in and get comfortable. We are right up your alley right now. We are dealing with a and what has turned into be a fairly dense reaction to a video called The Revolution Will Not Be Live Streamed, which has taken us on a wild journey directly into the world of philosophy. We are currently uh, attempting to locate this quote, which is as, follow as follows. As engaged subjects, we have to act with a view to the future, 
but for a priori reasons, we cannot base our decisions on a rational pattern of historical progress. So we have to improvise and take risks. There you have the rest of it. Interesting. So this is called consubjective, con, con, hold on, consubjective destitution. Whose concept is that? Or did he say Lacan's subjective destitution? Ah, it is Lacan. Subject, subjective destitution. The concluding moment of a psychoanalytic treatment. Oh, this is by Zizek. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's getting interesting in here. Now we're into Zizek. Oh, this is going to get very interesting very quickly. I want to find a definition of this. I want to see subjective destitution. Subjective destitution in art and politics from in art and politics from being towards death to undeadness by Slavoj Žižek. Lacan coined the term subjective destitution to describe the concluding moment of a psychoanalytic treatment. This concept can also be usefully applied to art and politics. In art, subjective destitution can be defined as a passage from being towards death to undeadness. In other words, to the position of the living dead. This passage takes place between Shostakovich's 14th symphony and his final symphony, the 15th. In politics, the subjective destitution designates the passage of a political subject to a radical desubjectification, to becoming an object of a political cause. Hmm. Okay, we're going to rewind and I'm going to try and take this whole section and see where we can go. I just was, I was a little stumped by this. Now we know where it comes from. It is uh, a, it is a, this particular use, let me just see if I can make this make sense. This particular use is a transmission of a concept from psychoanalysis to politics. The, 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 trans, the translation was of, of this concept to politics was coined by Slavoj Žižek. Uh, and it is the original concept comes from Lacan, referring to psychoanalysis. Let's continue. With some form of removing our personhood through grand claims or fear, subjective destitution does so out of a sincere and humble attempt at changing for the better. As engaged subjects, we have to act with a view to the future, but for a priori reasons, we cannot base our decisions on a rational pattern of historical progress, so we have to improvise and take risks. One example of subjective destitution does not come from the bourgeoisie or those with the time to chart a seemingly nuanced revolutionary course. Nope, it is actually reflected in healthcare workers during the pandemic. Without any guarantee that their actions would help in the end, without much help or guidance, and many times without any sense of hope, these workers improvised with what they had in order to deal with what was in front of them. They could not deny the truth of suffering. They acted out of urgency. On a personal level, we need to adapt this sort of selflessness and humility that confronts the present without any I feel like that's a bit of a, a simplification of what actually happened. Like, no doubt, there were definitely healthcare workers who did uh, persist 
purely out of that desire, but I mean, a lot of them also had very little options, right? Like you can't, you can't, in the middle of a pandemic, you can't always just give up your job and go do something else. A lot of them were stuck there by contracts, by financial need. And that's not to say that what they did wasn't heroic in some way or another. I mean, they were saving people's lives, which is in and of itself incredible. But I don't know if it can be simplified down to that. Hmm, and a lot did quit. Are we gonna say that healthcare workers who quit are like failing somehow? Or is it understandable that perhaps uh, the situation is more complicated than just a just a heroic decision to f take on death. Gutter profit. I came from President Sunday. I'm honestly kind of lost. You're not the only one. This has been a very interesting video so far, and it has gone in a lot of different directions. We've also stopped to interrogate a lot of the different portions of this video. I will say this, to the credit of uh, Sisyphus55, this has been a very thought-provoking video. I don't know... We're definitely gonna have to talk about this all the way through at the end. I'm glad I decided to react to this. I'm glad you guys voted to have me react to this because um, I have many thoughts. Claims on the future to take things one day at a time. This is the sort of constructive politics that Taiwo suggests as an alternative to deference politics. Constructive politics is the pursuit of specific goals rather than focusing on complicity in injustice. It involves multitasking, tearing down, and building up. Instead of playing whack-a-mole with injustice or redecorating our prison walls, we need to break these walls and build a better world. In terms of online spaces, this means the channeling of attentional resources to situations that can be improved. As he notes, information networks aid effective political action and can constrain the system's violence. Rather than compulsively monitoring the internal politics of BreadTube or Twitch or your own Discord server, it is up to those with influence, including myself, to actually adapt this approach and channel our limited energy and attention to specific goals in the real world. This does not mean the end of theory or discourse. We need these discussions, pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the will. I, I find this interesting. This is such an interesting, I feel like political theory is one of the like least discussed things. I find the fixation in this video on political theory to be somewhat strange. Um, most of what has been discussed here even the little bit of commentary that I did is from stuff that most people that are watching right now. Okay, real quick, just as a, just as a, uh, I'm gonna do a quick vote. Have you read anything of Agamben other than what Doe just read you? Yes or no? Okay, here's a vote. Let's do it real quick. I wanna see. Yeah, less than 10% of my audience, and my audience is already a niche within a niche, less than 10% of my audience has read anything. And that was me saying anything. By the way, I include myself in the uh, yes category there, and I have barely read anything of Agamben. I've read other things, mostly because of my contact with Doe. So I, I find the... This video's um, fixation on uh, um, on on theory and how theory is like a problem to be very strange because I feel like political theory is like basically no one in online political spaces, let alone IRL political spaces, actually spends any time on political theory. I feel like perhaps um, like the uh maybe there's just a bit of a playing like a bit loose with the term theory 
because of the whole play action distinction. I guess if you categorize all forms of streaming as engaging in theory, quote unquote, then I guess you could say that perhaps there is too much theory attention, but but I don't, but I feel like there's been a conflation of those terms. What does political theory even discuss? Is it mostly sociological topics like demographics and shit? Oh, it very much depends. It de depends very, 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 very much on what type of theory you're reading. Political theory is incredibly broad. I mean, um, if you're talking about like, I mean, Marx would be political theory and that was a very direct engagement with economics and with economic systems at the time. Um, if you go to somebody like, uh, like uh, Deleuze, then that's going to be, you know, Deleuze and Guattari are like people who are there engaging with interpreting conclusions uh, or articulating criticisms of and interpreting conclusions of psychology uh, and linguistics specifically and, and make and pulling political conclusions from those analyses. In addition to his history generally, political theory is incredibly broad. So there isn't like a single topic or a single style that's done. There's all kinds. Um, I mean, I guess you could say some forms of political theory are even in the form of media analysis, where they're taking a piece of politically relevant media and trying to pull apart the concepts and make sense of it. Yeah. Would the prince be something I would consider? Yeah, the prince could be something that's considered a political theory. Absolutely. Let's continue. Let's continue. I want to, I want to, I want to get through more of the video. I have a lot of thoughts about this. Look to someone like B.R. Ambedkar, a famous Indian politician involved in drafting the constitution. As a good example, Ambedkar had studied under John Dewey, a philosopher under the school of pragmatism. Despite the constant theoretical squabbling inherent in pragmatist thought, Ambedkar nonetheless took certain principles that he had learned under Dewey, such as nurturing human personality and a skepticism of supposedly timeless values, and he applied them to battle against the caste system in India. Being an untouchable himself, Ambedkar was applying theory to tear down by criticizing the caste system and build up through drafting a new constitution, a movement against an injustice, a tangible and concrete truth he found to be deeply personal. Another example can also be seen in Camus' conclusion of The Rebel, where his endorsement of trade unionism reflects the sort of concreteness that constructive politics requires. Far yeah. from being a form of romanticism, rebellion takes the part of true realism. So what was the point of this video? Um, firstly, this wasn't an attack against streamers or other online personalities. I think me specifically telling other people what to do with their platform would be a little entitled. And also, as I said before, many of the people okay. mentioned have participated in charities and activism. Um, this is actually more of a video addressed directly to the viewer and the general audience. I think if you feel hopeless about the world, you should probably start rethinking your relationship with online content. You know, make changes however you can and in whatever way it suits your personality. I think everybody has some sort of tool, privilege, or trait that can make the world a better place. And if everyone did what was supposedly insufficient, I'd like to think that it would eventually become sufficient in some way. So it's about kind of know suiting the action to your own like who you are for me specifically i don't really think i'm that great of like an orator in front of a lot of people i get really anxious at protests and why does he have his wi-fi password why does he have his wi-fi password in plain sight on the wall i know this is a really adhd thing to fixate on <laughs> that's a little bit I feel like that's not a good idea <laughs> I feel like that's a bad I, I hope it's a fake password that's kind of funny honestly okay let's I'm sorry let's continue let's continue I'm not great with coordinating events 
Um, however, I do have an interest in psychology and philosophy, and I also have this channel, which is pretty much a megaphone I can hold up to hundreds of thousands of people. In making this video, I kind of wondered how I could use this specific tool for some sort of change. How can I responsibly direct attention towards issues that need action? You know, one of my favorite cheesy quotes is, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is now. So that's why I'm going to start a bi-weekly stream slash podcast called Planted, where we ask you a specific question, namely, if, if you had an audience of this size, what sort of specific issue would you want attention to be directed to in order for change to happen? You guys Ooh. then vote on the issue. Crowd Crowdsourcing. Ooh. I'm cringing a little bit. <laughs> crowdsourcing your your oh man when you when you don't know what's important in your video about what's important so you have to crowdsource via an internet poll what's important never 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 do that and the top comment will be what is covered in the, the stream. And I couldn't do this alone, and I'm super happy to introduce a friend of the channel, Kaylin. Kaylin is a community leader and social critic who is currently majoring in psychology, and he's uh, very focused on the future of youth politics, so we have quite a lot in common, and he's better with like a event coordinating and <clears throat> organizing these things. Um, it'll just be more fun to have a conversation than me just talking specifically we'll, we'll we're going to cover an issue going over some of the the facts and then in order to make it a bit more like fun we'll uh, cover a piece of art whether it's a film book album that's related to the issue so it, i guess it kind of makes it kind of like a book club and i encourage you all to follow along um and then at the end we will talk about a specific channel for change or like a specific like way to engage with the issue you know it could be community action volunteering uh, fundraiser um, so you all have a direct way of constructively tackling the issue this is good but it still doesn't surpass one of the problems that was brought up earlier in the video which is that you can only discuss certain types of political action on your podcast, on Patreon, or YouTube. There are certain potentially very important topics or types of political action that you literally cannot, without violating TOS and thereby destroying your platform, even discuss. Interesting. And uh, ideally, we want to eventually like build from this and have a community where there's like different hubs of people that can fo focus on on specific topics, whether it's environmentalism, racial injustice, um, you know, anything really. Uh, and then ideally, we want to track progress being made that's coming from the stream. But we'll just see how it goes. Hmm. Initially. And uh, we're going to stream every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern, starting this week. All right, everybody, starting tomorrow, we're going to have a progress bar right up here in the corner that is going to show us governments toppled. So if you want to help out, hop onto my Patreon and get that donations going. We want to fill this bar all the way to the fullest. Governments toppled, capitalism's overthrown. Join me in this struggle. So it'll be September 21st. Um, the topic this week is something Kaylin was really focused on, which is the disproportionate amount of black people that are being arrested for marijuana possession in, the, in Texas. Although this is a wider issue across the states. And the film we're going to watch is Judas and the Black Messiah. And uh, you know, definitely check it out if you have the time and if you want to follow along with our discussion. So we will see you then and uh thank you for watching this very long video it wasn't that long it was 22 minutes all right okay all right wow i have a lot of thoughts first of all um i think i like the video i think i like that video i don't think i dislike that video 
I have some, I had some critiques for it and some disagreements, but I also agreed with it at some points. And I think I, I think it was a thought provoking video. Um, I do have further critiques for it, or I guess uh, thoughts on the video, um, which I guess I'll get into now. Um, first of all, uh, uh, I will say first off, I guess something I liked about the video is I do, it did very obviously provoke um, a considerable amount of thought, um, even if there were aspects of it that I felt confused by or that I felt like didn't quite click. Um, I, I do think it was quite effective at, uh, at getting our brains working. And that's something I can absolutely uh, not say about every video essay we've reacted to on this channel, especially on topics like this. God knows on this channel we have reacted to some... Uh, 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 let's say critical of debate streamers, critical of live streamers, videos that have been way, way, way less thoughtful, way less engaged, and way less um, challenging than this one. I think this video uh, does go above and beyond some of the previous ones that we've reacted to um, in the past. Um, <sighs> There were some aspects of this, there was a lot of this video that I felt like I didn't quite understand how it was plugging into one another or or it felt like there were concepts that were being dropped that were not elaborated on. For example, the, the segment that we, maybe maybe it's a fair critique to say that I over fixated on the definition of play versus action, but I felt like that didn't, if, if my critiques don't apply to that, um, that that like very serious you know political philosophers or political thinkers um especially in leftism um you know c can you know if those don't apply then what was the what was really going on there and i didn't really quite understand what the point of that segment was except to sort of um i don't know a d demean and I say this as lightly as possible. I don't mean this like th that, that anybody's feelings are hurt, but to demean the concept of play and to specifically to demean streaming as childish, basically, which I don't think that did a very good job if that was the point being made. And I think more serious, um, as we demonstrated with reading some Agamben, with reading um uh, uh uh some of the other uh i can't remember the the first the first citation that doe brought in by re by reading these there are people who've engaged in the work play distinction uh significantly on a much deeper and more and more profound and productive level than i think just sort of saying well play is bad and action is good and therefore you know streaming is basically just playing which is bad which is kind of what ended up happening in the video. Um, the other thing was this, this the, the, the portions centering around truth were somewhat odd to me because um, I, I didn't quite understand, like the, I didn't feel like the, the definition of truth that was being used throughout was entirely coherent. Um, because I, I don't know if you can just say that truth is when you experience something versus truth is when you know about something. And furthermore, I actually think that educating people on things is really, really important, especially, perhaps especially, on minority issues. Um, not because I think that like the only way to political victory is through the, uh, the ascent of a majority, but because educating a majority, uh, a majority group on a minority issue greatly increases uh, the, the likelihood of success uh, of campaigns to solve the issue that the minority group is dealing with. Um, you have more allies, you have people who are going to be less uh, resistant to the minority group asserting their rights and whatever. So I think that that broad, um, what was called in the video theory, the theoretical uh, education is an important part of making the world a better place. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And as some people, as Subs and Soda brings up, the experience as a model for truth is, uh, if, if taken completely, is fairly horrible. I experience the earth as flat, therefore is the earth flat. Yeah, that's obviously a bit of a simplified version of this. And I don't think that's exactly the argument that Sisyphus 55 was trying to make here. But I do think that's a risk. And I, as a result, I think that this definition of truth was a little bit... Um, unclear or nebulous and it clouded the message of the video um the idea of uh, the first portion of the video i feel was very spot on and i feel that these were a lot of observations that i think were just simply on their surface correct um for example i'm going to go through these um uh streamers are every single streamer with very few exceptions uh is trying to build a career uh, if you are building your platform, even if you are a streamer who does not rely on YouTube for your financial well-being, which is not myself, I do rely on streaming as a part of my financial well-being, though I am not completely reliant on stream for my financial well-being, it is my actual job, so if you want to support the show, that means the world to me see but even if you're not like me where i'm doing it as a job uh and i need the money um to live um the uh uh, uh you're still engaging in that uh, as a individual actor pushing your channel in an algorithm and so as a result there is always a limitation to the maximal amount of you know political good or whatever that your channel can accomplish your channel will always be your channel and you will always have to take certain actions that are being dictated to you by the system at hand in order to uh, if you want your channel to grow if your goal is to get the word out uh, on something important you still have to find a way to get the word out, which means you're going to end up engaging in the rules that YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or Twitter or blah, blah, blah set with regard to how they allow your word to get out. Because nobody, uh, no YouTuber controls how that actually works. YouTube, the corporation does. They design the algorithm, they design the system. Now you might be able to, the interesting thing of course, is coming up with creative ways to uh, work around that system. Ways to get your message out uh, without tripping any flags. Um, but that's, uh, but regardless, you're still gonna be limited by the fact that this is the platform. And it's important to of course acknowledge the limitations. For example, for example, um, uh, Twitter, x.com, is a website that I think is damn near impossible to actually get any sort of good message out on because the, the way that the website runs, it is designed to explicitly discourage most of the types of things uh, that anybody in a leftist state, you know, political mind frame would want to do is actively discouraged. Everything from conversations about gender and race, uh, you know, being actively discouraged, but also things like you, the only way to get your voice heard on that website is to directly pay the guy who every single day is boosting insane anti-Semitic content creators. It is an, a, a completely hostile uh, platform that uh, your participation in often does more harm than good. You could make that argument about YouTube and Twitch as well, which I don't think this video entirely did, but it kind of did. It didn't entirely. Um, I don't know. It didn't seem to have its mind 100% made up about Twitch and YouTube, which I think is also fair. Um, because I think that's a complicated question. Is Twitch, are Twitch and YouTube so flawed that uh, there's no, there's nothing to be won at all uh, by engaging in them? Well, I don't think that that's completely um, been decided on. I don't even, I don't know if that, I mean, the video at one point states that it, you know, that it seems like that's the case, but at other points, it seems like that's not the case. So I don't know if it is, if, if Sisyphus has decided you know, fully whether that's the case or not. Personally, I don't think so. I think that good can still be done on YouTube and Twitch. I don't think so about Twitter. I've made that very clear and I state my reasons for it, but other people might disagree and that's fine. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't stream on Twitch for a number of reasons. I think Twitch is very difficult um, to uh, to talk about most of the subjects that I care about on. Um, not impossible, but I think it's much more difficult. So I use YouTube instead because I think it's slightly easier. But I think a lot of that is a strategic analysis and not necessarily um, a, a as as foundational a issue as this video seems to imply. There are portions of this video that make it seem like um, like the 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 entirety of live streaming or video making is completely and utterly. Um, uh, in, incapable of breaching into the world of politics, and I simply don't think that's true. Um, not only, uh, maybe from maybe from Sisyphus Fifty Five's perspective of change or whatever, but I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I mean, but then again, at the end of the video, Sisyphus acknowledges that like a lot of live streamers have actually channeled their their audiences into doing materially good things, whether it's in the form of charities. Uh, charity or mutual aid pushes or you know direct political action of some form or another um i don't know there is a lot of indecision present in this in this video which again i don't entirely fault the video for that i think it's a complicated topic and i do think that this video has obviously prompted everybody in this audience including myself uh to to think about um yeah um the other portion that was talking about uh, uh, the 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 sort of uh, sapping of energy via um, like never ending chains of reactions to reactions to reactions to reactions to reactions, I do think that that is a risk. But I also think that it's not a unique risk to this format either. I think it's just something that people should be careful on. Like for example, um. Here, uh, do you want to know something else that has the same problem? Media analysis. Let's say a movie comes out that has really terrible politics, and somebody writes an essay or a video analyzing that media and critiquing its politics, and then somebody else critiques that one, and then that person critiques that critique. You can have these same problems in all all kinds of uh, of analysis. It's not just you know, political live streaming or political video making. That can happen in almost anything. You could even argue that a better example of this sort of time sink would be um, the chain of Disney Star Wars movies. That, oh, another giant Star Wars movie that's three hours long is gonna come out and people are gonna give their very, their small amount of money that they have to this stupid movie and go waste their time on a movie that has no politics, that 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 actively uh, uh, communicates nothing, that eats three hours of their day. And I think that you could actually make the argument that on a raw level, stuff like that consumes way more of people's time because I mean, even if uh, you know a thousand lefties watch you know a combined you know. Uh, or, or, or 90 hours each of a drama stream that goes on for, you know, back and forth for two months, uh, that still isn't going to come to the close to the cumulative amount of wasted time that a bunch of people going and watching the rise of the, you know, that half the world going and watching Rise of Skywalker or the entire Harry Potter series or whatever uh, is going to waste. So, uh, I understand where it's coming from, and I do think that it's a valid critique that there is a responsibility on political content creators who actually give a shit to do a better job about that, and that audiences around political content probably should think a little more deeply about whether or not drama is interesting. But as I said before, I don't know if you can calculate it down to, oh, well, this is distracting from a more important issue because I don't know that people would care about the more important issue or that they could be even be made to care. Um, for example, if I was to boot up a stream tomorrow uh, on, uh, on, a, on you know, a, a union struggle and I convinced everybody else 
uh, in my entire social circle to also do that. You know, uh, Vosh, Xanderhal, Keffels, everybody, everybody I know in the streaming space, we're all gonna stream about this one thing. There might be some people who all turn into, who would be willing to turn into that, but do you think that we're all gonna have our most successful streams ever because we're all covering an important topic? No, there's gonna be people who just go do something else entirely. They just won't watch at all. They'll just literally go play video games or go outside or whatever. So I don't know if you can directly calculate like that. Um, I don't know. My, my biggest critique I think of this video in the end is that it seemed uh, disorganized and it, f it felt the entire way through like it was tinged with guilt. And that's a little sad. Um, something I understand for sure. I personally have struggled a lot with, um, you know, believing in the content that I make. Um, but also there, and I, and this is me, by the way, this is a critique of me, not of this video. There is also a pretension that can happen, um, where, uh, you're like, oh, my video isn't literally changing the world as if literally anything that anybody does single action can change the world. Um, sure, there are always ways to improve your art, to improve what you create and to improve what you put out into the world. But the reality is that at the end of the day, everybody's gotta eat and we live in capitalism and uh, most people have gotta work day jobs and do all kinds of different stuff. It's not exactly like we're all like, you know, uh, we're all, it's not like we're all like, uh, you know, super, you know, agents that can control all of our actions all the time. We all gotta get down in the muck and do shit, you know? There's a lot of grinding that you have to do as a result of just how do you put food in your mouth? How do you make sure that your basic needs are taken care of? So it's important to remember that even the greatest artists of all time um, had to take some commissions sometimes and uh, sometimes had to do stuff that they didn't love, you know? So you don't have to necessarily, um, you don't have to, I mean, obviously there's layers of this and there's levels of it. Like obviously, you know, don't, don't use that type of thing as an excuse to be a total sellout, but also just remember that like at the end of the day, not every single thing that we do has to be um, some sort of like divinely good action. You know, you, nobody, that, that standard isn't possible for anyone to live up to, let alone uh, media nerds camera nerds, m microphone nerds trying to make their way in the world. We're content creators. Everybody who came here is, for the vast majority of people who came here, are people who grew up, uh, you know, getting excited about some type of art form, whether it's films or animation or, you know, radio or whatever, and we wanted to make that thing. And that's okay. It's actually okay to kind of just want to make things. In fact, I think that's an incredibly, in and of itself, is an incredibly good thing. And I think, I think this is a very roundabout way to say that we should be careful not to get too fucking Christian about uh, leftism, guys. Because uh, if you spend all day whipping yourself because you're a sinner with it, 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 with with your 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 burden of sin that you can never work you know you can never work off g wishing for the communist heaven but you're you're so burdened with the sins of your day-to-day -day life because you didn't do 100 leftist prayers um it's miserable it's torturous we fight against this type of thinking um, not everything, like our, our living our lives uh, it, well, uh, spending time with our loved ones, uh, delving into art for its own value, creating things uh, out of our emotional experiences for their own good are virtuous, in my opinion, in and of themselves. They're not bad just because they're not all, because they're, you know, not completely subsumed to some political end goal which was something that was a repeated issue to, in the second half of this video was this fixation on uh, making oneself like a object for a political um, mission or, a, uh, or, or, or sort of subsuming your suffering towards a political goal, which uh, I don't know. I don't think that that's a healthy way 
uh, or a valuable, like, I don't know. Like, I don't think that people should be paralyzed and tortured with guilt. We're fucking uh, mammals. We're weird mammals that didn't have any choice in being born onto this earth. Sometimes we want to just find nice berries and spend time with one another and, 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 give each other uh you know hand jobs and 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 uh, hang out with one another and play silly games together and enjoy the exit the the raw form of life itself and i would say that that in and of itself is part of what brings a lot of people to leftism right is this idea that our system turns everything into a commodity turns everything into a process of work that at the end of the day um is miserable and humans aren't machines that are supposed to work from the moment they wake to the moment that they go to sleep. We're supposed to be able to just live our lives as they are, to live our existences as a living being of which we only get one. Right? Getting a bit defensive, Mama? I can't help but think that you took that video as a personal indictment. Wait, I was literally just talking about my own, my, my, huh? That's the opposite of what I'm talking about. I don't take this personally at all. I quite enjoyed the video. The first thing I said was that I liked this video. Whatever. No matter how, no matter how deep you go on something and in analyzing and taking somebody's video at good, at good. If I was defensive about this, I would have just said, Duh, this video is stupid. Streamers do tons of good all the time. What an idiot. Stupid video essayists. They don't know what it's like to be a streamer. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe. I've been talking about this video for two hours on its own terms, praising it and critiquing it. Now I'm being defensive. This is me being defensive. You have made me defensive. And by that I mean offensive. Fuck you. Anyway, yeah, I would be, I'm defending the creator from their own anxieties, if anything. I'm saying, hey, don't overstress yourself. You don't want to work yourself into like some sort of Catholic torture situation where you believe that everything that you do, your art, everything that you write needs to be in service of some uh, political goal. Sometimes it's okay to just make something because you like it, and that does put good into the world because as it turns out, Making things that you like is adding beauty to the world in and of itself. I, I think something i've noticed a lot now this is a bit this is di you know digressing a little bit something i have noticed a lot is um a very very strange catholic like catholicism flavored uh not even catholicism honestly it's all it's christianity flavored thing that flows through american leftism and it's most common i think in um in like i don't want to be too mean but like woke scold the woke scoldy type corners of the internet where um there is a very much a concept of like original sin that you just being a person that was flung onto a dirt ball in the stars is not good enough to deserve to live um or to be happy or anything like that that like if just existing is an offense, you by existing and not doing it the right way that you've done something wrong. And I think that leads people to a very demented approach towards their online politics, which only makes them miserable. Um, and, uh, well, yes, of course, as, as, as SFMTX says, millenarian, uh, mi Millen millenarianism, I always struggle with that. Mil millen mil millenarianism, 
millennialism, whatever, uh, is very, very popular in in communist spaces. Yes, the idea that basically the revolution is just a reskinning of the apocalypse and that, that it's going to be a glorious, unifying, destructive event where we are unified in our mutual destruction and then the kingdom of heaven, I mean, perfect, glorious communism will follow afterwards. That is very common and it's super, super Christian flavored as well. Um, but there's also these other aspects of like this idea that um, your days should be considered, uh, your days should be spent basically uh, 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 making up for all the sins that you've inherited by simply living. Nobody really has a choice to be born and, and live in uh, capitalism. We all got stuck in it. We're all in the same prison together. We are trapped in a machine and um, you're not like inherently flawed by just trying to stay alive. In fact, I think that's like counter counterproductive to try and argue that people are. Um, yeah, we're all just trying our best. And uh, I think now is the part where I'm just gonna explicitly state what I believe on the topic. I do believe that good can come from streams, but I think that it, the most good comes from streams when they are not pretentious, when they don't pretend to be something that they're not. Uh, my stream is not the revolution. My stream will never be the revolution. However, I believe that I can teach it and encourage people uh, as a streamer. What's more important is that I believe that I can facilitate a space where people can make friends with one another, can build connections safely, can start to actually uh, cement real social connections that will allow them to engage in the world uh, that will grow their personal power. They can connect with other like-minded individuals as a result of what I put out into the world. If I stake out a place for people to connect with one another, for people to uh, find other trans people, for people to find other lefties, for people to find other people who are uh, interested in, in, in environmentalism and animals and all that kind of stuff, um, it's, that's a thing that's taken for granted. Social spaces right now are very hard to find in the world. Um, lefties talk about this all the time. Hell, everybody talks about this all the time. It's not even just lefties. Right-wingers talk about the degradation of the social world as well. We all acknowledge that this is happening. Everybody can observe it. Um, so I think that it's a gr it's of great value for politic for for any type of content creator to be able to create a community that encourages people to connect with one another and also sets them on the right path to doing so productively. I just think it's important that we keep in mind the limitations of any space that we operate in. Just like how uh, you wouldn't expect. Uh, like uh, uh, a a every uh, you know every single McDonald's worker to be engaging every moment in revolutionary action, although you'd be surprised what kind of amazing things can come out of a McDonald's workplace. Um, you shouldn't expect every streamer to be a, a you know flag waving the beginning of the revolution. The revolution will not be live streamed definitively, um, because that's not what revolutions are. Revolutions aren't TV events. They are utter great changes uh, in which many people are, are a part of and are swept up in, uh, often without even knowing that they're a part of it. Um, yeah. And uh, also, I feel it's important to recognize that, um, that no matter how much we can acknowledge incidents where, uh, where you know, individuals engaged in acts of greatness, most of those people didn't entirely know the repercussions of their actions at the time. All of our actions change the state of the world. That means that you never know uh, to, to the full extent, you know, what you're participating in. Our small actions are very important. You guys know one of the things I repeat constantly on my stream, do not fucking die. And the reason why I repeat that all the time is because I recognize the value of just one person holding out. Every single queer person, every single creative person, every single person in my audience who holds out is another brilliant being that is here for another day. And the possibilities that come from that are, un are truly incalculable. 
I think that people should f continue to fight, that they should stay and, and know. And that's why I take the time, because sometimes you just need to hear an, a, a command from somebody telling you that, yeah, actually staying alive is good. And I do believe that. I do believe that humans are beautiful. And I do believe especially that my lovely listeners are beautiful and that they should stick around and, uh, and fight. Um, I think small actions should not be minimized. I think they're valuable. And I think that these spaces are full of all kinds of people taking small actions that have big impacts on the world. Two people meeting one another through the discord of a live streamer and being able to help each other live a better life is a good outcome. The world has been improved by that. Part of the doomerness that overtakes spaces is forgetting the beauty of things like that. And sometimes it's hard to quantify. I made the joke earlier about that governments toppled uh, a bar. You can't make a bar for that. There is no analytic for number of people impacted by Demon Mama's stream. And, for, and this is me speaking to other creators. It's difficult because YouTube trains you to always look for positive analytics but you can't always measure exactly all of the impact that your stream or the thing that you put out into the world may have. So try to look a little deeper and try to remember that not every stream is gonna be a, a piece of the revolution, but you might just change the world for the better. So, yeah. Have you considered maybe facilitating helping your subscribers to find each other and link up IRL? Seems like a good way to bridge with the material realm and will definitely help keep folks alive. I do that literally almost every stream. Almost every single stream, I inc directly encourage my fans to build connections that go beyond just two people passing each other on social media. If you're asking me, am I gonna buy my random followers a train ticket to go see each other? No, God, no. Are you crazy? <laughs> How rich do you think I am? I got, I'm, I am, you, you greatly overestimate my income. By the way, please, God, donate. My income for this year has been very low for numerous reasons. Jesus. But yes, I obviously encourage all kinds of stuff like that. Well, thank you, Silent. I really appreciate that. Yeah, there's all kinds of, that, that we all, again, like you say here, uh, you know, be, being active in building community wherever I end up, uh, one that can slacken the burden of living under the state and capitalism. Yeah, that's all we get, any of us can do. Again, we were, th this cage was built around us before we were born. We were born into a machine that crushes people. Nobody in the world, almost no one. There are some, there are very small numbers of some people who are completely born outside of capitalist spheres, but it's incredibly rare. All of the people I'm talking to, if you're watching this stream, you were born into a machine that was designed to squeeze the life out of you for profit. You were born in it, like a, like a, like a, a dog that gave birth in a kennel. You were born in a cage. And all we can do is analyze our environment, struggle against it how we can, and take care of each other in that space. Make it as good as possible. And uh, someday, we might end up completely escaping the prison, but the machine. We might end up completely taking the wheels off of it, which would be amazing. But it's not that easy. You can't just will it in. By the way, if you're not a member of my Discord, discord.gg forward slash demon mama is literally the place where so many people in my community have connected with one another and begun to build lasting social connections that go beyond the internet. Um, places like YouTube comments, Twitter comments, blah, 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 are very shallow places. And Discord isn't 
immediately the deepest place, but it does allow you to actually engage with individuals on an individual level, and you will sometimes make some serious friends. So consider, cons cons consider, consider joining the Discord at discord.gg forward slash demon mama. And of course, if you found this react analysis, etc., interesting, please make sure that you press subscribe on my channel and also consider watching and checking out and giving a like to the original video that we reacted to today, which is titled, The Revolution Will Not Be Live Streamed by Sisyphus55, which I am linking right here for anybody who wants to go over, leave their thoughts and the like. I quite enjoyed this video. I don't agree with everything, obviously, but I thought it was very good and I appreciate that we were able to react to it together.